Welcome back to another video in my series teaching you how to take a quadcopter from a box of parts on a desk to a finished, configured, ready to fly racing drone, freestyle drone, whatever you want to call it. That's the video that you're watching here. And if you've been watching the whole playlist, then you already know that, and you're probably skipping past this part to get to the good stuff. But if you just dropped in randomly because you found this in a suggested video or a search result, there's a playlist in the video description. This is a whole long series where I try to teach you everything you need to know to build a racing drone, an FPV racing drone, and fly it. So if that is the kind of thing you're interested in, start with video number one and work your way through. In this video, we are going to set up the receiver. We've bound the receiver and we flashed the firmware and now we're gonna get the flight controller talking to the receiver and do some other settings, basically so that when we move the sticks on the transmitter, the quadcopter's gonna know what we're telling it to do and do what we tell it to do. I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're gonna learn something today. Just so there's no confusion, you may notice there's a couple parts missing from this quadcopter. I um, Earlier in the video series, I had to troubleshoot something and I unplugged a few things. And now I haven't plugged them back in just because it keeps things simpler. But all we basically got plugged in here is the receiver. If you have everything plugged in, that's fine too. There's no harm. But I'm just going to leave it as it is until we come to a little bit later in the series. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in my battery. This is a 4-cell, a 4S battery. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. And... I am using a smoke stopper to protect against any sort of problems that we might have. And actually, we don't actually need the battery for this one because luckily, I didn't just realize, because luckily, if we plug in USB, you'll see that the receiver powers up. And this is interesting because some flight controllers power the receiver from USB, which is terribly convenient because it means we don't need a battery when we're doing the stuff we're going to do in this video. But not all do. So if someday you're working with a different flight controller and you plug in USB and the receiver doesn't power up, don't freak out. It just means that that's, it's, it's too bad, but... You just have to plug a battery in. So, okay, we're going to set that aside. We're going to leave it just how it is. And here in beta flight, we're going to hit connect. And what we need to do is we need to tell the flight controller where the receiver is plugged in and what type of receiver that we've got. So I want to take you back to this still image from when I soldered up the receiver. And what I want you to see is that some of these pads are labeled TX5, RX5, RX2, and each of these is referring to a UART, U-A-R-T, or just pronounced UART. And the way I want you to think of a UART is it's kind of like a USB port on a computer in that it is used to, you know, you plug your mouse into the USB port. Well, we're going to connect our receiver to a UART on the flight controller. We're going to connect the GPS, uh, the GPS antenna to a different UART on the flight controller. And basically different peripherals can plug in or get soldered to these UARTs and the flight controller will talk to them over the UART, the same way your computer gets data from a computer mouse or a Wi-Fi card over USB. Now here in beta flight, we can go to the ports tab and these are the UARTs that our flight controller has. And you can see that they are numbered UART 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Not all flight controllers will have the same number of UARTs and sometimes they skip numbers. So you may have a flight controller that has 1, 3, 5, but not 2 and 4, don't worry. But the, whatever UARTs you see there will have a corresponding pin or pad on the flight controller. So here we can see that on this flight controller, there's two pads, one labeled TX5 and one labeled RX5. TX stands for transmit, RX stands for receive. Each UART will typically have a transmit and a receive pad. And the five, the number five there indicates that this is UART5. So what we need to know is what UART number did I connect each of my different peripherals to, and specifically in this case, the receiver. Now, We've got our receiver soldered to the S-Bus pad. And the reason for that, I mentioned this earlier, is that FreeSky S-Bus protocol has a weird characteristic called inversion. And the flight controller needs to have an inverter that uninverts the inversion. And so that's the reason why we're using the S-Bus pad and not the RX2 pad. The S-Bus pad specifically has this inverter that S-Bus requires. If you're using any other kind of receiver, like uh, like Spectrum or FlySky, then you used the RX2 pad, and that's going to be this pad right here. Uh, RX2 is just UART2 receiver, but without any inverter. 
The S bus pad, there's always a question of, well, what UART number is that actually linked to? And in this case, the board designer has kind of hinted uh, to, at that because you can see the S bus pad is right next to the RX2 pad. And so it's fairly safe to assume that S bus is also UART2. Although it doesn't have to be the case, you may need to consult if you're doing a different build. You may need to consult uh, your flight controller documentation to find out more info about that. So SBUS is our receiver protocol, and we're using UART2. If you are not using the exact receiver that I'm using, then you need to figure out probably you're using RX2. If you're using Spectrum, then it's going to be, well, I'll show you, I'll show you in a minute. The only reason that you might be using a different UART would be if you were using Crossfire, Crossfire uses a TX and an RX pad, whereas all the other protocols typically just use an RX pad, and you probably use TX5 and RX5 if you're using Crossfire. So here in the ports tab, we need to enable Serial RX for whichever UART our receiver is on. And in this case, UART2 is already enabled by default, and that is in fact the one that we're using. If you were using a Crossfire receiver, then you probably are using UART5 and you would disable CRLRX and enable UART5. And then whenever we make any changes to any of these tabs, the last thing we need to do is we need to go down and hit save and reboot. And you need to do that before you move to any of the other tabs or you'll lose your changes. So in this case, we're not going to do that because I, I don't want to save that change because I want, I want my serial receiver on UART2. Next, we'll go to the configuration tab. And if I scroll down here, I get the chance to tell the flight controller what receiver protocol I'm using. Because I am using a FreeSky compatible receiver that outputs the SBUS protocol, the default, which is SBUS, is going to work for me. If you're using a Spectrum receiver, most likely you'll be choosing either Spectrum 2048 or SRXL. Or if you have the very newest um, 4650 Spectrum receiver, you would choose SRXL2. I have videos about setting up those receivers. I'll link that down in the video description if you're using one of those, but that's not what I'm using, so I won't be doing those instructions directly. Finally, if you're using Crossfire, you would choose CRSF. And if you're using FlySky, you would choose IBUS. We're going to leave this on SBUS because that's the one that I'm using. And when you're done with that, you'll save and reboot. And then we're going to go to the receiver tab. And what we see here in the receiver tab is that all of these channels are locked at 1500. The channels go from 1000 to 2000. So 1500 is the center. And the throttle is locked at 885. And when I move the sticks here on the transmitter, nothing happens because the, the transmitter is turned off. So let's go ahead and power this up. Now that this is powered up, aha, something very different has happened. As I move the sticks, notice that the channels are moving. This is amazing. That's what we want to see. But we're not done yet. There are some basic checks that we need to do. And the first check that we need to do involves the channel mapping. So the standard way that most transmitters are set up around the world is what's called mode 2. It's not the only way they're ever set up, but it's the most popular by far. And on a mode 2 transmitter, the throttle is up and down on the left stick. The yaw axis is left and right on the left stick. And if you're a little confused about, well, what's the yaw axis? Take a look down here at this 3D model of a quadcopter, and you can see the yaw axis sort of makes it spin flat. The pitch axis is the front to back, and that is up and down on the right stick. And the roll axis is left and right on the right stick. Now, in my case, my channels are mapped correctly. When I move the throttle, the throttle channel moves. When I move yaw, the yaw channel moves. We can see these labels over here on the left, yaw. When I move roll, the roll channel moves. And when I move pitch, the pitch channel moves. That may not be true for you. And if that's not true for you, what you need to do is rearrange these letters, A-E-T-R. Those letters correspond to the... This is really unfortunate. Let's take a closer look. So the channel mapping refers to airplane controls, aileron, elevator, rudder, and throttle. And it's really confusing because A in the channel map is roll, which is aileron. Why not just roll? Well, roll is R is rudder, which is yaw. So it's unfortunate, but basically what you need to do is rearrange the AETR in such a way that your controls move the correct channel. So for example, well, it's really common to have the yaw and the roll channel need to be flipped. And you would do that, let's see, yaw is R, roll is A. So we would just switch the A 
and the R with each other. So it for, goes from A-E-T-R to R-E-T-A, and then we would hit Save and Reboot, or Save down in the lower right. Once you've got the channel map working correctly, the next thing we need to do is set up our endpoints. And there are various ways to do that, but I'm going to show you a way to do it that works for every controller. And you're not, you're not going to have to sort of dive deep into OpenTX. Well, what if you're not using OpenTX? This is going to work for every controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note of each of these four channels low and high values. So for example, the first channel is the roll, and roll is, when I push it all the way to the left, it goes to 987, and when I push it all the way to the right, it goes to 2011. The next channel is pitch, when I push it all the way down, it's 987, when I push it all the way up, it's 2011. The next channel is yaw, 987 to 2011. I think I see a pattern here. And the next channel is throttle, 987 to 2011. What you're going to do is you're going to take all four of these channels in order, roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, and you're going to write those values down, the low and the high value. So for me, it's just going to be 987 and 2011 for all of them. Then we are going to go to the CLI tab, and we're going to do some command line stuff. And what we're going to type is this, rx range zero, and then we're going to put the first set of numbers from, I think for me, I think it was the roll channel. And for me, that's going to be 987 and 2011. And now we're going to do that again, rx range one, and we're going to do the second set of numbers, 987, 2011, rx range two, 987, 2011, rx range three, 987, 2011. And by the way, notice that the channels were numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, not 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't let that confuse you. Once you've done that, we're then going to type the word save. And when we reconnect, what we should find is that the channels go from 1,000 to 2,000, and that's what they need to do. That's what the flight controller expects. And the RX range command basically just kind of makes that happen, whatever your actual channel endpoints are. Now that's a step that is skipped by a lot of people, but it's kind of important that you do it because if your endpoints aren't what the flight controller expects, when you try and turn the quad to the right or turn the quad to the left, they may, the flight controller may not think that you're deflecting the stick the amount that you think you're deflecting it. So the quadcopter may turn faster to the left and slower to the right, or it may just not turn very fast at all. And setting those endpoints correctly solves that problem. The other thing it lets us do is it lets us tune this stick low threshold optimally, and that gets rid of some dead band at the bottom of the throttle. Just take my word for it. Now that we've done this, we can set the stick low threshold. You basically need the stick low threshold to be just a little bit more than whatever the channel goes down to. So our channel goes down to 1,000, so we'll just set that to like 1010. And the stick high threshold, the same thing. Our channel goes up to 2,000. We'll set that to, let's say, 1990, just a little bit less and a little bit more. And we'll hit save. And that is going to do it for this video. You have now set up your receiver. Your sticks are moving the correct channels on the flight controller. And we have a good foundation for actually being able to fly the quadcopter. We're not done yet. We're not ready to fly yet. There are still a few more things to do, but that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. This is oftentimes a place, the first place, where people really start to stumble. So let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. I try to answer all the questions that I get. I do my very, very best to answer every single one. Um, if, if this video is more than a few months old, YouTube may not be showing me comments on it anymore. That's just how YouTube works. So if you ask a question and I don't get to it in the comments, go ahead and just message me on Facebook Messenger. Just hit me up. I'm Joshua Bardwell on Facebook. Send me a message. Ask me a question. I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.